When I, 23 male, was 15, my dad died and my mom, 45, didn't wait too long to start over and moved her new partner in just two months later. My dad left everything to me and not even a dime to her, they weren't married. My dad's will was so structured that she couldn't challenge it, and she attempted and even asked me to pass over one of my properties to her to show my new dad that he was welcomed. I couldn't even if I wanted to because my dad's will specified that I must be 21 to access everything he left me. This dude had kids, 18 male, 19 female their ages now, and my mom prioritized them to keep him happy. I mean, she wasn't like a bad parent or neglectful, but she tended to favor them. They went on trips, and even if she didn't tell me not to go, she'd say something between the lines as, wouldn't you like to go to your grandparents, my dad's, better? I mean, I'm not stupid and I know she didn't want me there. When I turned 17, she asked me to leave my own house because I kept fighting with her dude, and I also reminded him of whose house it was when he wanted to play the man of the house. I also called him John Conroy. My grandparents told me to avoid confrontation, so I went to live with them. My mom would visit me often and tell me how much she loved me, but she needed to keep peace at home. After college, I decided to check my properties and the one where my mom lives. I wanted to renovate it to rent it since it's a good one and can help me afford my masters. I went there to inform my mom, but no one was there. Later, I found they went on vacation, so I called her, but she didn't answer, so I proceeded to change the locks, mainly to take possession officially. They arrived yesterday and couldn't get in. Of course, they called me, but I wasn't in the town. I went today because some renovation work will start in a few weeks. I was in the backyard and my mom came in furious, yelling at me, saying how dare I do that. So we talked and I let them know they had two weeks to leave. Her husband, an unemployed, oh sorry, self-employed, was furious. My mom and her stepdaughter started crying because the girl was pregnant. I'm sorry, but I made up my mind. My mom's family is shaming me, but I'd like to know if you think I'm the idiot. Edit. I own the house and I'm the one who's been paying the property taxes every year. My mom called me today saying we could talk. Not the idiot because you were kicked out of your own house and made a secondary priority as a child. As an adult, you're now doing what you couldn't do then. Ensure you're doing everything legally so they can't make things harder on you. I'm wondering if your father knew something and that's why you got everything. Also, OP, even if your mom's stepdaughter is pregnant, she, and all of them to be honest, isn't your responsibility. OP, you were charitable enough to let them stay until you were 23, when you could have easily kicked them out two years earlier when you turned 21. So they need to take responsibility and be thankful that you were graceful for this long already and not attack you over it. Be wary of them destroying the house in revenge, OP. Just thought I'd throw that out there. He tried by calling once and showing at their door while they weren't there. That isn't much, far from an official letter with receipt proof or anything. It doesn't even seem like he left a voicemail when he called. And usually, you change the locks after the tenant is gone, not while they still live there and haven't been evicted yet. So, you are the idiot, OP. The mother and stepfather likely have squatters' rights and tenant rights that dictate whether or not you're allowed to change locks, or renovate, how much warning you're obligated to give them, and what constitutes reasonable steps to have notified them. This isn't my house, my rules. It's what a landlord can legally do when their property is under tenancy, and that's well beyond what we can talk about here. Agree. Major red flags that she treated you like rubbish over the years, but when she needs a place to stay, she's happy to leech off you. She's an adult. She made a bed so she shall lie in it. You are not responsible for her or her husband, and I'm sure they're fully capable of working. Sorry for the pregnant lady, but at the end of the day, these are your assets and home. Go no contact if you can and tell her where to go. You're not her bank or provider. That was her job, and she failed miserably when she basically excluded you in favor of her new family. So, okay, she was happy with them. Well, she can stay with them, and they can all be happy together in their homelessness. Some background. I have four kids. My eldest, John, 27 male, was my first wife, who died when he was five. I eventually remarried and got two stepdaughters, Lisa, 25, and Anne, 18. Then my second wife and I had Mike, a young male teen. My wife and I made sure to give them comfortable lives. When John and Lisa graduated from university, we gifted them condo units. We'll do the same when Anne and Mike graduate. Also, they have trust funds that will be released when they turn 30. I'm pretty proud of my kids. John and Lisa graduated from top universities. John has a high-paying job as an engineer, while Lisa pursued a master's degree in business while working in marketing. 
Eventually, she started her marketing consulting firm while being a part owner of a spa. John recently got engaged to his girlfriend of two years, and they want to get married by the end of this year. She seems nice. However, she doesn't earn as much as him. My son spends a lot of money on her, on dates and on expensive gifts. I understand it's his money and he can spend it however he wants. She also moved in with him in the condo that I gave him. As far as I know, she doesn't pay her share of utilities and association fees. And now John is asking to get part of his trust fund to use for the wedding since his fiancée doesn't have much money to contribute to their wedding. Now, here's where I might be the idiot. I told him I'd release part of his trust fund early if he drew up a prenup with her. He got angry and told me I was unfair because I released half of Lisa's trust fund last year to help put up her business. He told me that I was playing favourites. I told him that Lisa did something worthwhile with her trust fund, and while a wedding is worthwhile, I told him it doesn't seem safe to use his fund for a wedding to a girl who doesn't bring much to the table. I told him I just wanted him to have some security by drawing up a prenup. He got angrier and said I was implying that his fiancée is a gold digger. My wife and the rest of the family refused to take sides. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. So he's done everything you've expected, and you're really going to try to force him into a prenuptial? I understand your position, but if he loses the money, that's on him. So just make it clear you won't bail him out. You are the idiot. I grew up relatively poor. My husband comes from a very wealthy family. Everyone called me a gold digger. We're happily married, and now I make more money than him. Only by a few thousand. Am I still a gold digger, or is my husband the gold digger now? Plenty of people are gold diggers, but making less money or coming from less money does not automatically make you a gold digger. Having a prenup isn't a bad idea, but the way you talk about everything in this, it's obvious that you only care about money. You're the only one who cares. We have no clue what anyone else thinks or how they are because you only talk about money. Not the idiot. Why would premarital assets be shared? Once you're married, you're a team. Of course, any financial success your son may have after marriage would almost certainly be achieved in large part thanks to his wife's support. But gifts given from loved ones? Why would that be a joint asset? Update. The next day, I had a long conversation with my son. First, I apologized to him for making that comment about his fiancée. I realized it was demeaning and uncalled for. Second, I asked about their living arrangement. He did admit to paying for everything, including bills and food. He even pays for someone to clean because neither of them would. I asked if she ever offered to pay and he said no. I told him I have nothing against their arrangement and spoiling her, but he has to be wiser about his spending habits. I explained the importance of a prenup and said I had one with his mom and stepmom. He still refuses to because, according to him, it might offend her. Again, raising some red flags. So I will stick to my decision and release his trust fund when he's 30, as we initially agreed. He wasn't happy with this. Lastly, I asked what kind of wedding they planned to have that they felt the need to use his trust fund. She dreams of having a big wedding on the beach. She also wants a photo and video production to announce their engagement, which I find ridiculous. They want it this year but can't afford it, as she's only paying for her wedding dress and my son admitted that he doesn't have a lot of savings, probably from going on expensive dates and trips. So, I told him it's not practical, but if they really want it, they should wait and save up for it. At that point, I felt better about my decision not to release his trust fund early. The way I see it, my son could go broke in a few years, paying for everything and spoiling his fiancée, wife. Their trust fund is the last thing all my kids will get from me. That being said, I may be an idiot, but not a total idiot, to not support his wedding. My wife and I agreed to give them a certain amount that should cover a lovely venue and still have some leftover amount left for other expenses. It will be our wedding gift to them, and if he's still not happy, then there's nothing more I can do. If they go no contact or low contact, I'd still feel at peace with my decision. I provided for him, and I tried to protect him. If she leaves him and he ends up losing everything, I'd hate for that to happen, but that's on him. But I do hope that their marriage works out. Thanks for the update. The real question should be, how can he and his fiancée not have money for a wedding when they have a paid-for condo, he has a high-paying job and she works too? How much is this wedding they're planning? Like Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel style? I mean, I had a decent-paying job and a house payment and saved a nice chunk of change for a decent-sized wedding with some planning and budgeting. I think they need financial literacy more than a prenup. Am I the only one concerned that if what OP says is true about his son's fiancée not paying for utilities, etc., is in fact concerning? 
I always pay my fair share because I'm an independent adult, and marriage doesn't change that. Also, why such an extravagant wedding if she cannot afford it? If your son screws this up and you bail him out, you will not be doing him any favors. Whatever the outcome, he needs to be on his own. Hopefully, that means he'll be happily married, but I'm not sure that will be the case. My best friend got married last weekend at a destination wedding. I was maid of honor and our friend group was bridesmaids. I originally planned on having my kids stay with my in-laws because I didn't want to exhaust them by bringing them to a destination wedding. But a few weeks before the wedding, my friend insisted on me bringing the kids for the ceremony because she wanted them to be ring bearers. I had told her that I couldn't just bring the kids to the ceremony because I'd have to pay for a babysitter for the reception and I couldn't afford that. I had to pay for a destination wedding, a destination bachelorette party, all my expenses on hair and makeup, and the maid of honor dress plus the wedding gift. She was begging me and started crying about how much she loves my kids and wants them as ring bearers, and she'll find a solution regarding a babysitter. I trusted her on that. I didn't want to let her down because her wedding had already been cancelled four times in two years and I didn't want to add to her stress anymore. So we leave for the wedding and last minute I find out that the bride had forgotten to hire the babysitter, despite her reassuring me we don't have to worry about it multiple times. That resulted in my husband skipping the reception and returning to the hotel with the kids. After the meal, everyone enjoyed themselves with their partners, while I was all alone because my husband was away. My best friend told me to cheer up, and it wasn't a big deal, but it was hard as I felt like I was third-wheeling everyone. All my friends were with their partners, it wasn't their responsibility to keep company to me because of the bride's negligence about the babysitter. After we returned, the bridesmaids told me how sorry they felt and how I was right to feel upset. They also said they're mad about how the bride has guilted all of us regarding the amount we'd spend overall, despite knowing our financial situations, and how they feel like she partly guilt-tripped us because her wedding had been cancelled before. This week, I met for coffee with my best friend, and she asked me my honest opinion about everything and not sugarcoat it, so I told her. I told her I was mad how she promised to handle one thing for me and she failed after me and the bridesmaids had made sure to do everything to her liking despite our hardships. I told her I didn't want to complain about her during the wedding planning in order not to stress her out, but I told her since all of this was over, I felt like she was wrong trying to guilt trip us as if it was our fault her wedding got cancelled before. She then started crying and said she's worthless and a horrible friend and that I implied she's a bad person. The rest of the bridesmaids found out and now all believe I'm the idiot for telling the bride my honest feelings and I should just suck it up and let it go despite being right. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. So the bride wanted everything her way regardless of the cost or other burdens it might cause you and the other wedding party members and didn't stop manipulating people after the wedding. I think that the only reason she asked for OP's honest opinion was to be able to turn people against OP and make them forget how she treated them all. Also, she didn't get defensive. She went right to, oh, I'm a bad person. She knew the answer before she asked. She was hoping you would lie to her to make her feel better. Sounds like an emotional manipulation tactic to me. She may not be so great of a person. Destination weddings already ask a huge burden on everyone involved. But as someone not in the US, this thing about bridesmaids paying for their hair and makeup continues to astound me. You gave so much for her special day and she couldn't even keep her babysitter promise. Why are you friends with someone so manipulative and willing to use you? I'm a 24-year-old woman and have a stepmother who recently turned 50. My parents divorced when I was 5 and my dad remarried when I was 8. So I've known my stepmother for a long time and I rather like her. Plus, she's the mother of my younger half-siblings, so getting along with her is good. I live with my mom growing up, but still saw my dad a lot, and by proxy, I saw her. For my mum's 50th birthday, I paid for the two of us to stay at a really nice hotel for the weekend and have a girly pampering time. It was a great, memorable time for the two of us. I got invited to the party for my stepmother's 50th, and I know she feels the cold easily, so I made her a crochet blanket in her favourite colours, purple and grey. It's the size of a queen bed, so she can easily have it on their bed. She liked it, but seemed confused that there wasn't more, and asked if I had something else planned. I was confused and asked what she meant, and she brought up how I'd done a whole weekend thing for my mom, and surely this blanket wasn't all that I had planned for her, right? The party got a bit awkward after that, and I told her I'd done more as that was my mum, and I'd also spent months working on this blanket for her, so it wasn't a simple thing. 
She got upset, and when I stressed the difference being that my mum was my mum, so of course she received a different category of gift. My dad felt I was being rude and not treating her fairly. Now, I like her, but she didn't raise me. Had my father been raising me, I could see why she'd be upset over this, but he only had me every other weekend and the occasional summer and Christmas. My dad then tried to say I should take her out to make it more even. I got upset with this and said no, that I couldn't afford that because of the money I'd spent on wool, and besides, I felt my gift was plenty thoughtful. I ended up leaving the party not long after all of this. My dad is upset with me, thinking I did this on purpose to upset her and ruin her day. I honestly thought I'd done something nice for her birthday. Is it wrong that I'd planned different kinds of gifts for this? Not the idiot. You spent months making her a beautiful and thoughtful gift, and she's mad that, what, you didn't spend enough? That your mom got something more? You're not the idiot. Your stepmom is super entitled and your dad should be ashamed for backing her up. I don't know if it will do any good or worth the breath used, but if you've been crocheting for a while, she must know how time-consuming it is. Knowing the time and care it takes to crochet a queen-size blanket should have made her feel honoured, not slighted. For months you worked on this for her, so a lot of thought and planning goes into a project like that. You thought of something that would comfort her, keep her warm. You picked her favourite colours and spent so many hours over a long period working on something for her. How close could the two of you possibly be if she can't recognise that? Honey, I'm so sorry for you. A gift like that is a literal labour of love and deserves to be cherished and appreciated.